So we are taking a look in advance at Math 20-1. So this is the Grade 11 Math course that we will be starting this fall. It is broken into three units as far as the curriculum is concerned. As we're going through the previews, we're going to be focused on those units as they are defined by the province and separate and distinct from any textbook we may be using. So they're also going to be very unevenly sized. One of the units in particular is much bigger than the other two. So the first unit is the algebra and number unit. So this is a unit that is based on uh, just obviously algebra, numbers, and doing the calculations. And it all comes down to a single curricular outcome. Each unit has one general outcome, and then there are specific outcomes that go with it. Our first general outcome is to develop algebraic reasoning and number sense. And the specific implementation that we're going to have for our first specific outcome is related to absolute values. It is expected that students will demonstrate an understanding of the absolute value of real numbers. Now, as we're going through, I may not recopy the entire specific outcomes, especially since it is expected that students will. It's the phrase that begins every single curricular outcome for the course. So when we're getting into specific outcomes, I'm going to start with demonstrate and go on from there from this point forward. We're going to have people demonstrate an understanding of the absolute value of real numbers. Thankfully, this is probably the simplest concept you are going to see in the entirety of high school. In fact, we can do one or two minutes in this preview and you'll probably have it. So the absolute value of a number is how far it is from zero on the number line. So we have x, we have negative x, they are the same distance from zero on the number line, namely the positive value of x, therefore the absolute value of the positive x is x, the absolute value of the negative x is also x. So in other words, if you're taking the absolute value of a number, you just have to ask yourself, is it positive? Well, if the answer to that is yes, then you do nothing. You are done. If the answer is no, because we have a negative number, then you multiply by negative one. This is the entire concept. Just to be clear, because of of my penmanship, that x means multiply. Now the one thing we have to remember, the most common mistake students make, is that you're looking at the absolute value of the entire thing. So if you've got the absolute value of x equals 5, this is not equal to the absolute value of x plus 5. You have to do the calculation first. So if x is, say, negative 7, Taking a negative 7 and a 5, you might, well, actually this is going to work out to be 12, but you do that substitution first. You get that you have a negative 12 inside the absolute value, and absolute value is just these two vertical lines on either side, and then it comes out at 12. So that is the basic concept where absolute values are concerned. And then we're going to be dealing a little bit with how to graph them as well. Because our absolute value is the only function we have where your graph can take a sudden sharp turn. So if you have a graph like this, and then all of a sudden instead of coming down, it's coming up. I guarantee you there is going to be an absolute value somewhere in that graph, and that, that is the point where it's zero. So if y is the absolute value of x, your graph comes right here. 
So this side is the y equals x line, this side is the y equals negative x line. If, say, your graph is y is absolute value of x minus 3, then it's going to be parallel, and it's going to have a y-intercept of negative 3 because this negative is outside. If your graph is y equals the absolute value of x minus 3, where the minus 3 is in the brackets, and actually I'm going to quick change colors here. Very sorry about that interruption. But if we have y equals the absolute value of x minus 3, well, then this is going to look a lot like a normal graph. What we have to ask ourselves, and term we're dealing with absolute values, is what do we get when the absolute value of the thing in brackets is zero? Well, it's zero when x equals three. So what, from x equals three up, where x is positive, the bracket is positive, we get that nice straight line there. But anything less than x equals 3, we'd have a negative number in the bracket. It's like we have reflected our graph in the x-axis. So as opposed to the absolute value of x minus 3, which dip down below here, and they should perfectly coincide from that point on, this takes its turn there. But absolute values are the only functions that you're probably ever going to see, aside from some piecewise defined functions, which have these sharp turns in them at any point.